This time on whatever we want, we talk about. We are asking the question, what is the superior way to watch movies? There are time codes down in the description if you'd like to jump around to different points in the episode. We talk everything from IMAX to iPhone. Enjoy! Welcome back to Whatever Want, the podcast where we, Jake and Daniel, two devils and handsome gentlemen, review content across all media and media, movies, TV shows, video games, and beyond to give you the most interesting behind the scenes insights, storytelling techniques, all that jazz, and more. We talk about everything from Star Wars, Marvel, Pixar, Disney, and more. So without further ado, let's jump into the show. Daniel, how are you doing, my friend? Doing pretty good, dude. I got arms to work in VR. It's weird because I like don't have a wrist. I thought you were just ending your sentence. I got arms. I was like, I have arms. You know, having arms Whoa, is cool. I did not know you had that problem for the past ninety-four episodes. <laughs> but no, it's a big thing because like before my game, I only had hands, right? But now that I have like a full body, it's like kind of like whoa it's coming together I'm yeah like in the game yeah. everyone check out daniel's so, tiktok again like we said below also speaking of things you check out on um, last episode we said you should leave a comment with your instagram handle for um a shot or you get like a free mug and no one did it yeah so if you if you leave a comment on our youtube uh you will literally get a free mug on either this video or last video so do it do it um do it. just comment it's free free stuff um, last thing, pre-banter, I just want to say this very nice old lady today made my day. I was at the grocery store, and uh, as soon as I stepped out of my car, she just kind of was, like, walking. It was like, oh, you're very cute, and just walked away. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> like, that made my day. And then I proceeded to hit every red light on the way home, so my mood has been all over the place. <laughs> I thought you were saying, and then I proceeded to hit on every woman on the way home. Oh. I'm just like, Jake! <laughs> I, thought saying, I thought you meant I hit every woman with my car on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you can't be as no. good as her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the story of how I um became so obsessed with this origin. old lady and yeah, yeah. Became a mass murderer. Just kidding. I'm just this is a joke for legal reasons. Okay. <laughs> are you ready to jump into the main segment? Yes. What are we talking about, Jake? We are asking the question today. What is the superior way to watch movies? So there are a lot of ways. We're gonna go through all of them and then kinda like yep. talk about some of our favorites. So you said when I brought this up to Daniel, Daniel, you mentioned like a Swiss bathroom thing. Yes. What, okay. I, so I actually I was, don't know what you're talking about. What is that? I was scrolling on TikTok, you know, TikTok or Instagram, and I saw that like in Sweden or something, it's somewhere in the like north of <laughs> Europe, whatever. In the north. Um, <laughs> Just assume it's Sweden. Okay. But no, no. Wait, I let, saw let me get in the mood. Let me get in the mood. Meatballs, IKEA. Okay, proceed. <laughs> yes, they have this thing up where if you go to the bathroom, they have like TV screens. Like and like embedded in the floor in the stalls. So if you go to the bathroom, you're just there using it, you know? I imagine like, they only play the Swedish chef from the Muppets on those TVs. That's all they can play. <laughs> <laughs> well no, I I wonder how they link it to like the proper like theater, you know? Or do you like have oh, to like they, put oh, that so they in? Do it in the theater so like you can watch while you're like if you go to the bathroom during the movie, you get to continue watching the movies, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I wonder. Yeah, how does that work with sound? Like, is it just like a hodgepodge? Oh, no, they don't. They, they, of, they, like, don't, they don't do sound. Oh, they don't do sound, like but they do have subtitles. Okay. But like, I'm like, how do they get the right film for its room? You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe maybe they're like labeled like this saw is like theater four. What if like three people from theater four use the bathroom at the same time? Then they're just like crammed in the same stall. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, oh. man! So it sounds like we got to take a road trip or not road trip, <laughs> a road trip through the water to. Uh, yeah, that sounds great. Yep. I think actually there is a Muppets movie. Speaking of the Muppets, where they do like a uh, like a map transition sure and they like are driving and they road trip th- and the ending is them emerging from the water in their in their car pretty, yeah so you know what maybe we're not so far off there we're just <laughs> taking inspiration <laughs> from the muppets anyways so that's obviously the peak right now top of the list is the swedish bathroom yeah let's go through talk about the other ones so first on my list was just movie theaters i think it's like the classic obviously. one that everyone yeah. thinks about uh so i mean there are different types of movie theaters and then i kind of want to go through and talk about like pros and cons of each but just what are your thoughts on movie theaters just in general okay there is Obviously, a vibe with going to movie theater. I mean, it's it's the home of movies. Obviously, it has movie in the name. <laughs> exactly, but no, like like because the whole idea is that's built around this watching experience. You have so many things that accommodate that. That's true. That. A lot of the other ones on my list are like. You can watch a movie here, but it's not the main purpose. So I think that's a good point. Exactly. So, I mean, there's different types of movie theaters. Like, there's regular ones, and then there's, like, IMAX. Um, there's Dolby, which I mm-hmm. think has, like, better sound. That's something I've kind of recently discovered and started going to out here because my roommate really likes it. Mm-hmm. And there's old, like, I think also older retro movie theaters. Like, some of them are still yep. around as, like, kind of like a 
style like it's oh let's be hipster and go to the old theater which is kind of cool we get like old timey popcorn yeah but i personally really just enjoy going to the movies i like the ones that have specifically like the reclining chairs those are so are expensive to, like, though <laughs> I know this is so expensive, but it's so nice. I honestly don't mind. It's going like you're able to like just chill, uh, just like normal AMC. We had one near us, the AMC Camp Hill. Have you seen the date theaters? The date theaters. Where it's like a it's like a double wide seat, and it's also a recliner, double and you will have like brass. you will have like blankets and stuff. Really? And, like, you go there. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't feel know like what wanted, That's kind of interesting, but like I don't want to go on a group theater date with a bunch of other couples. Like I would want to, if I was having an intimate movie watch experience, I'd probably want to do that at home, which we'll talk about. But, I feel that. I feel that. I don't know. I, maybe it's just because I'm single and I'm like, meh, couples. But maybe if I was like in a couple, I'd be like, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, you're the one guy that's there by yourself. Oh yeah. my god! I just get a huge couch to myself. <laughs> I bring like a stuffed animal. <laughs> but yeah. So what are your what are your thoughts? Are you like a big fan of going to see like IMAX? Oh yeah, I do. I for some films like I feel like you need to see it in IMAX. Like yeah. Like, when Avengers Endgame came out, I was True. so happy I was able to see that in IMAX. Like, There's just something about just... a theater experience. Even if it's not IMAX, but IMAX adds to it, definitely. But, like, the huge yeah. screen and, like, the sound is very well balanced and, like, made for theaters, I feel like. Even if it is really loud. Yeah. But that's kind of part of the experience. Like, you're immersed in it. There's, like, theater etiquette, which often people don't obey which i think oh is part goodness. of my cons but but i think if when people do obey it there's like this etiquette where you're like forced to like pay attention i think going to a movie theater is great for paying attention to the full movie compared to like when you're at home or like watching on your phone or something like that talking about theater etiquette you just reminded me of this one thing that happened during spider-man dude so wait spoilers 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 well, I'll spoilers put this before. spoilers <laughs> i did that before spoilers for spider-man no way home yeah. for the next like <laughs> couple of minutes <laughs> it was a scene where like andrew's about to go save mj right uh-huh and like as he's reaching out my one cut i was down in florida when i was watching it right my one cousin shouts out oh he saves her and i'm just like had he seen it before i know but he like ruined the whole moment because oh, it was yeah. like quiet and everything I'm just that like, sucks. That is one thing. Uh, yeah, let's let's talk about the cons of of going to a theater. I think the people can be a pro and a con. Cause like, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's a pro because when people like when you're just in the environment, like, and people are cheering and excited. If it's like a super yeah. hype moment, that is awesome. Like, for example, yeah, like, memory great. comes to me is Infinity War when uh, spoilers again when uh, Thor comes down to Wakanda and like has his epic entrance yeah. and everyone's cheering. I was like, dang, this is like an amazing like part of movie history I'm a part of right now. But like when people do it too much and holler too loud and like miss parts of the movie, I think that's that's annoying, annoying way too far. So it's a really fine line. And it's not like anyone's fault. You get caught up in the moment. But like I remember like during Infinity War, I, like when Captain America comes out for the first time in his like mm -hmm. nomad outfit, like Scruff. steps behind from yeah. the train um steps from behind the train and like everyone was like cheering and I, I like i don't even remember what line he said but like i think he said something and i like missed the line that was said because like everyone was just like screaming and i was like come on guys like I wanna, i'm here to see <laughs> the movie and listen to the movie to counteract that though yeah this is something that's kind of wholesome that happened when i went to go see morbius right what um something good yeah. came out of morbius yeah, yeah no no because like i wasn't because I had to go see it alone, right? Because, like, the guys are busy. You're out in California, right? Yeah, I think sorry. it was, like, my first time ever seeing, like, a movie alone. Imagine if I requested off work to come home to see Morbius <laughs> with you. Sorry, boss. I got to fly home. <laughs> the movie of the century. That's, that's one out. expensive movie, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for real. Um, sorry, but I no, what you're saying. But behind me, there's a whole row of guys, right? And there's just... It was, like, us. But, like, it wasn't us, obviously. So, it was, it, but... It was funny how after the film, like, the you say to the credits. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. That's what it kind of felt like. They're, like, <laughs> talking about, okay, like, what could be happening, what's going on with, like, the Easter eggs at the end. And, like, it, it was just cool to see. And I'm like, man, I, I miss that, you know? Yeah. So. Those are good moments. But I just feel like certain people just don't have good movie etiquette. Like, when people are on their oh, yeah. phones, that annoys me so oh my God. much. And when people, like, put their feet on my seat, I don't know. I, like... I personally always try to get a seat. This is my little AMC secret. If you get the row right behind the aisle, behind the handicap like spots, so it's not handicap, but like you're um, on the row, they like space out the handicap spots. So there's a lot of railings in the front. I get those seats mm -hmm. so you can put your feet up on the railing and it's a great view, pretty much almost exactly middle of the screen. That's my little secret. I always go for there. You still have pretty good sound too, because sound is also designed to be like in the center, which yeah. is like a couple rows up from that, but... That's you're in a pretty still optimal spot. Yeah, I'm not. I was. I was never like too fond of like going all the way to the back. Like I know a lot of people do that because they're like, oh, it's nah. cool. But like I, I'm not a big back movie guy. 
I don't when people know. go to the back, I feel like they're getting touchy, to make touchy, out and know? stuff. Yeah, yeah, I have gone to the back once for that. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, the Lego Batman movie. I wish I didn't do it for that one because I wanted to Wait, see what? that one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? Hold on. You're both watching the Lego Batman movie, and you're like. <laughs> It's go time. Like, <laughs> like yeah. what? you know that the soundtrack? <laughs> like, Batman. That man gets you going. <laughs> oh, right. man. Anyways, uh, but yeah, so those, like, people on their phones at the movies and, like, talking and kids. I feel like I'm being a little hypocritical because if my sister knows, but, like, when my mom and I are seeing a movie together, we always just, like, poke fun of it and, like, talk to each other and, like, giggle to each other during the movie. But, like, that's also, like, kind of my way of being, like, oh, I like this. Like, if I'm yeah, invested yeah. enough to, like, poke holes in it and, like, thinking critically about what doesn't make sense about it instead of just, like, blandly, like, not even caring. Like, that, for me, is my how I show, like, oh, this is a – I like this movie, which is, like, a weird roundabout way of doing it, but I don't know. But, yeah, pros, snacks. We didn't talk about snacks. Yes, dude, snacks all the way. What's your go-to snack? Okay, so I always get a popcorn. Right? Peanut m M&M and a slushy. Yeah, I know you're a it slushy It messes guy. up my gut later. <laughs> it, like, ruins my gut. But, like, dude, the combination when you get the popcorn with the peanut m M&M, oh, so good. And then you wash it down with the slushy. I have a whole system for it. <laughs> I have the system. And it's so good. I, I was always a big cookie dough bite guy when I was younger. Mm. Those were really good, just that brand. I then got into popcorn and, like... When I started, before the pandemic, I, my family and I would go to the movie, like, all the time. And we had, like, the yearly, like, bucket that you could just refill. I, I was, like... Abused it? I, I, no, I was, like, a, <laughs> no, I was, like, honestly, like, a, um... Because I didn't want to leave in the middle of the movie to go get popcorn again. So I was always, like, a <laughs> popcorn Nazi, I felt like. I put restrictions on how much we could eat. Because, like, <laughs> the, the bucket had, like, a brim. And, and then, like, the base, the bulk of it. And I was always, like, you can only go down to the to the brim uh, during the trailers. And then we can eat the rest. So, like, my family's, like, rationing out popcorn. I'm, like, <laughs> and, like, as soon as, like, the the studio, like, logos would roll, they'd, like, dive in. Because they're, like, so hungry for it. Um, I don't do that as much anymore. But I still try to ration it. Because I, I want to have some popcorn for the movie, you know? Is that a I crime? I have a system for that, Is that too. a sin? No, no, no. It's not a sin. No, you're good. It's, it's understandable. You only yeah. have so much popcorn, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you but, get uh, me, man. <laughs> I get it. But that's a, for me, I ha- I have systems for that, too. I'm not like a Nazi with it. I just like pace myself. Like, I, I eat a lot in the trailers. Don't get me wrong. But then that, I know that will mess me up. So then I'm like, right. okay, let me take it easy for a bit. Let me, let me suck on that slushy <laughs> like a little a bit, you know? <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. All right. Well, so if you have a popcorn system or snack system that you do, let us know in the comments. I also thought about some merch. We're, we're planning on dropping some merch soon, a little hint here yep. for our 100th yep. episode. But I thought some cool merch would be like a movie theater, like snack jacket where you could like bring in your own maybe. I don't know if we'd be able to sell that. <laughs> I, I was always a guy. I would always bring in a water bottle to movie theater. I just always put it in my back pocket. Nah. And I also... You know, maybe I'm admitting to some things here, but like, maybe I shouldn't admit to all these things. <laughs> okay, anyways, let's start. Let's stop thinking about criminal activity. <laughs> um, but <laughs> the, the downside to snacks are that they're so expensive because the way movie theaters are set up, movie theaters barely get any profit from the actual ticket sales and like mm-hmm. the movie. Actually, people paying to like go see the movie in the theater, what they make a majority of their money off of is the snacks. So that's why they upcharge and snacks cost so much money because they. That's how they make their money, basically. Yeah. Um, for most theaters, how they're set up. So that's the only downside: is that snacks are super expensive. Um, so maybe we shouldn't like make merch of pe- bring people to sneak snacks in because that'll put things out of business. Maybe movie theaters out of business. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's crazy to think about how rough it was for films, just theaters. Yeah. Again, during COVID, because like all the theaters shutting down and stuff. I'm happy that like things boom back the way they did. I'm sure that there's still Spider-Man trying to really recover. brought back things, but but yeah, still things yeah. are like not nearly as big as they were. Yeah. Do you have any last minute thoughts on movie theaters before we move on? I, move on. I, I think we covered it pretty good. I think All right. We covered it pretty good. The drive-in. I want to talk about that. Okay. So this one's unique. Yes. Because it's it, like a theater, but outside and with your yes. car. Basically, they don't provide any of the seats or any, or the sound. Yeah, no, you no seats. That. There is food. It, well, it depends on which one you go to, but they, they usually do provide food as well, which is awesome. Yeah, my um, sister worked at um, the drive-in by us, Harris 
people call it horrors, but it's actually I, hares driving. I wasn't really a driving guy, not gonna lie. Like, really? You guys come not I didn't really go, eh. One, the sound's terrible. The projection's not the best. It, depend, it depends largely on when you're going to go see it, right? Yeah, like, it's if you very see it, like, weather ep- dependent and, like, season yeah. dependent. That's one of the cons. But I, I personally, we'll talk about the pros and cons. I personally just overall really like drive-ins. I think, honestly, it might be one of my favorite movie-going experiences just because it's so rare that I go. And when I do, it's like an, I go, like, as an event, like, with friends. I don't know. I really just enjoy the drive-in. So you, But you personally don't like it. Not really. Not really. I mean, it depend- I haven't really seen... I've only been to the drive-in like once or twice. That's the thing. What are the movies you saw? Uh, I'm pretty sure once was Grease with you. I don't think I saw Grease at the drive-in. Maybe with Liz. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I forget, but like it was, it was okay. Movie experience wasn't the best. Nah, dude. Drive-in's just and actually then, my favorite. <laughs> it just doesn't hit for me. Like, it just doesn't. Like, on top of like, not only like trying to compete sound-wise, like... With the speakers on the front that are, like, relatively weak compared to, like, all the ambient sound as well. It's just, yeah, so the way eh. our drive, drive-in works, you can either play the sound by tuning into a radio station on your car or by getting a radio that you can, like, rent from the front office, which that also, I think, in itself, if you choose to use your car, that always gave me stress. I was worried my car battery was going to die because you get, like, you play two movies when you go to the drive-in. It's also cheaper, I think, than going to the actual movies because you get like two in one but i was always worried that like my car was gonna die so between movies i'd like turn on my car like recharge my battery a bit but that being said i just love the experience like you get to like just chill and like bring lawn chairs and relax like lay down in your car with your friends or if you're going like with a date it's just a lot of fun i feel like if we went more with the guys i would have had more fun especially if we like had drinks or something like that i haven't gone since i've been 21 except once but i was with a girl i don't know i i really liked it i I think i went once with tyler our friends tyler and aaron but it was Mm -hmm. after i worked at fedex in the morning back a couple years ago (laughs) i used to work at fedex so i would i worked 4 30 in the morning to like nine like eight or nine in the morning then i stayed up all day and then i went to the drive-in at night and i for some reason decided to drive and so by the time we were going home after seeing two movies after the sunset it was like 2 a.m and so I had almost been up for 24 hours, and I was just like, I should not Dead. have driven home, honestly. It was like I was drunk at the drive-in, but bad. <laughs> so I was so tired. Um, yeah, but my sister worked at the drive-in, and she really likes it, and I think she also likes the experience. She um, worked the concessions and just helped out just in general, but the, the food there was, I think, also different. Like, you had your popcorn, but I think at Harris you had, like, pickles on a stick and stuff, and it was just, like, more mm. unique food, and you can kind of... It was more unique, don't get me wrong there. Like, it looked, more variety, which is always cool. Yeah. But, like, pickle on a stick, all right? But there was, like, like, like nachos, hot dogs, like, yeah, like, you don't get that stuff at, like, a regular theater, so that is a plus. That was a huge plus. Also, if you try to eat nachos in a theater... Yeah, that's true. I think because you have your own space in your car, that's, like, you can do more, have more freedom of, like, what you want. Like, it's a hybrid, almost, of, like, you're not as, like, prim and proper as, like, in a movie theater, like, with the etiquette, yeah. but, like you're also still more focused because you, like, chose to go there that you're not, like, as distracted as, like, at home. So I think that's a good balance there. Some more pros before we get into the cons. But the pros, I think it's really fun when you get there early and, like, before the, because it goes on live when the sun sets. Like, before the sun sets, like, there's a lot of space. And then when I went to and, like, you could toss Frisbee with your friends and, like, there's, like, a playground. You just, like, walk around, run around. If you if you if Sometimes you'd see people you know there. I think that part was really fun. Make me want to do it now. Dude, I love the drive-in. And also, also, I know I've talked about this in the past, but I just want to reiterate because this is like an episode focused on this. But my perception of movies depends like very heavily on like where I'm seeing the movie at. Like, for example, if I see the movie theater, I love the movie. If I see it, as we'll talk about, on a plane, I hate it. But like the driving, because that's like my top, I think that's my top choice for movie going. Mm-hmm. That's like peak for me like i saw i think planet of the apes like an okay one i was like that was great and i saw the emoji movie and i was like that wasn't half bad like i think it's just because i (laughs) I love being at the drive-in and like the atmosphere of it like just really skews my perception so now every time i go to a movie there i have to like really think like was this a good movie or do i just love going to the (laughs) drive-in but that kind of brings in the question like good movie watching right is it then a good movie watching experience because it's distracting like that or is it a bad moving watching you know what i mean yeah like, it's maybe, fun and everything yeah. but like wait, wait you know what do you mean, mean? Like, can you explain that further i didn't is the experience of everything else distracting you 
from actually like experiencing the movie to its potential. Right. So what would be like the the control so, environment to watch a movie to judge if it's good or bad kind of thing? I I, I feel like that would have to be movie theaters. I don't again, know because like you have the base. external factors of like oh we have popcorn and like like I feel like a dark room with no distractions would be like the base. But I feel like that would also suck to watch a movie. <laughs> exactly. So, like, if, if you're talking about, like, control, control, yeah, you'd have to ju- it'd literally just be, like, you in isolation watching the film, right? Yeah. And then you're either adding or subtracting, like, distractions. Yeah, I guess that, de- that really, you, it's hard to judge, like, a movie because I feel like part of your interpretation of a movie is where you're watching it. So, like, if a critic says, like, this movie was great, maybe they were watching it in, like, a movie theater with, like, great service and stuff. And maybe that added to their, like, they were in a good mood. So, like, I think yeah. it's really hard. I mean, it's it's just, that's just goes, if you broaden this, it goes back to just criticizing and, like, objectively defining art and what's good. And, like, that's, like, next to impossible. It's all opinion. So, I think it's really hard to, like, accurately do that. So, like, I don't envy movie critics. Even though we literally review movies on this podcast. So, like, maybe that's something we should consider and I, I take wouldn't a look say that at. we are critics, though. No, no, no. We no. like enjoying movies and celebrating storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. <laughs> um, so, let's talk about the cons of yeah. drive-in. I think we talked about the weather. Like, I was there once yeah. when it rained. But honestly, I think I just love the drive-in too much because when it was raining, it was like a nice <laughs> drizzle. And it was I was with I was with a girl that I was seeing, or like kind of seeing. It was a weird situation. And um, it was just really nice, like just kind of movie in the – like watching a movie with like some, some rain going. Like we just turned up the volume a bit so you could hear it. But like it was just kind of uh-huh. romantic. I don't know. It was turned nice. the volume a bit so you can – Daniel. Not hear it. <laughs> it was – I liked it. It was it – was Yeah, the, I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> I like the experience even with the rain. But sometimes when you're just like with friends and you're like you had this plan because you have to plan so far in advance and like Yeah, yeah. And then like you go and it's like up oh, the weather sucks, like that kinda sucks. It's go- going with the flow, you mean. Like like that that can suck when it does rain on you, but other times it can work out. Rains on your drive in parade. <laughs> but also also I mean again, this is something we didn't talk about in theaters, but you can't pause it and like go to the bathroom or anything like that. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure there's I don't think there's a drive in where like you go to the bathroom and there's screens on that <laughs> that'd be cool you know daniel that'd be invention. really sweet we're gonna new business model no one steal this uh copyright i said it so you can't take it on a bathrooms at drive-ins are they just porta potties or are they actually i think there were some restrooms at harris at harris it probably depends okay. like i know there's some high-end drive-ins like mm. like you know that's also something we can do a high-end drive-in for luxury cars only i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> um, just the teslas and bmws yeah. in there. <laughs> do it be cool though if you did like you know the elevator like car sales things if you do, like elevator like levels of like drive like, I mean, like the carvana thing yeah yeah for like a drive-in and you could see i don't know that, that because that is one thing that is an issue with some drivers if you get like a big truck or something in front of you that just sucks oh it's true like you can't yeah and like especially Either if like you- their um trunk goes open like really high if it's like a big car that also sucks because you can't see some of the screen unless you have like a tall car too um, it also sucks if they get there late and then you're just like you have nowhere else to go. Yeah. Also, people leaving in the middle or like after like a movie or something like it's just blinding because like they have their headlights on because it's night and then you're just like, oh yeah. my gosh, we're like a minute while they drive past or like reverse out or something. <laughs> so that people leaving is a lot trickier than just sneaking out of a movie theater. And then people, the people, there's also people around and some people like talk, but like because you're in your own confined space, I feel like it's less of an issue than in a movie theater. But that's just me. Yeah. But overall, I just love drive-ins. Any uh, any other cons you want to talk about with drive-ins? Not really. No. I mean, the only other thing I could think of would be like like technically you could say like content because I know sometimes in drive-ins like they don't have like the most recent films. Really, um, I think but, Harris had, but other times they. Well, the I know Harris ones. does, but they also like they yeah, do. They do special events. It I think that's on a the pro because they do like yeah. they can also do like oh retro night like Greece or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, I see your point. All right, yeah. Next, home watching movies at home. Obviously, you have the benefit and comfort of being at home. You don't have to be around other people. For the introverts out there, you know that works great. You will have your own snacks, but again, you are having to be the one to prep them and everything. So it's kind of a balance there. At the same time, you were saying before about like being distracted at home. Uh, there is a lot of distractions. A ton happen, of distractions, you know? like family yeah. and like if you have kids and other people, roommates, housemates, and I don't know, your phone. It's so easy because like no one's judging you mm-hmm. for like being on your phone during a movie. I think that's huge, honestly. I mean, there are ways to get around that. Like, for example, we were talking before about with people like setting up systems for like how they eat. It'd be a way around that would be like them saying systems like, okay, I'm going to talk my phone while I'm watching a movie at home. 
You know what I mean? But I don't feel like a lot of people would do that, you know, because like yeah. an extra step that they're putting onto themselves. I, I what, are, what are your thoughts on seeing movies like different thing, like different versions? Like you have your phone, you can watch a movie on. You have like a tablet and like computer, television. I think because things are so accessible on your phone, it's easy to watch stuff on your phone. But that also sucks because it's such a small screen. That's not how it was like intended to be watched. Well, that's the thing that I like now with VR because being able to put on my VR headset, like say I want to like, I'm like just vibing. I want like when I watch YouTube or Daniel's solution to a small screen is just put the screen extremely close screen to your my face, face. So it looks huge. <laughs> but no, it works because if you have this, you're able to customize where you want the actual like film screen in that 3D space, right? Mm. So it technically won't be like full resolution if you think about it because you're only having, I think like a 2K by 2K lens there. But at the same time, you have full options of deciding like the size and how close and how far the experience is. Right? Yeah. But for when it comes to other things like like phones, tablets, uh, TV. I mean, I feel like TVs are definitely better than both phones and tablets. I don't watch things on like my phone other than if it's like TikTok or something. You know what I mean? Because it's okay. like designed for that. But if I'm at home, like I know that not everybody has like a TV setup. That's the thing. But I feel like for people that do, it is beneficial. Because it'd be terrible just sitting in bed all day and like watching a film and like you have like trying to like, I don't know, eat your snacks there and then you're just like, like this all day. Like I don't know. I, I think there are pros to co- the f- cone to phones though, because um, it, everything's so accessible now. Like if you're on the go, like you have like, I don't know, like half an hour, you can watch an episode of a TV show really quick. That's true. Because I was getting my car service today and I had to wait an hour there and I didn't. I didn't uh, watch a TV show, but I could have. Like, I brought a book, but, like, I could have easily just, like, caught up on a TV show or something. So I think, because like, one pro to a to phone is just how accessible it has made everything. And, like, I think new content is being discovered every day by people that, like, wouldn't normally get attention and wouldn't even be funded to be made just because we need the, – the society now, like – craves content and we watch it all the time because of our phone so i think that is a big pro is that because we have so we watch more t- television on our phone it's allowing for more creative things to be made there's a lot of crap yeah. being made too but yeah some good seeps through that also reminds me of my time in atlanta when i was at the airport i had to sleep there overnight which sucked but in between like playing pokemon go and calling <laughs> you uh i had the ability to like you know, I was able to watch a show or, like, watch a movie on my phone. Yeah. Uh, just to pass the time. So, I, there are benefits to that. You know, I think I think in that case, it'd be more utility, though. Uh-huh. Instead of directly experiencing. You know what I mean? If I was in that scenario, I wouldn't watch something. At least for me. I wouldn't watch something I'd be, like, waiting to watch. Like, say it was, like, a new Moon Knight episode. Right. right. I would rather wait until I get home so that way I can watch it on TV and experience it, to, like, the best that I could. Instead of like trying to cram it on my phone while I'm in an airport. You're gonna like, hate me. I've been watching those on my phone just because I stay up till midnight and then lay in bed and do it. And oh <laughs> no, Jake, why? Because I I know when I post on TikTok, people will comment spoilers about it, and I want to not have spoilers. <laughs> so I'm like, so I have I to watch stay it off. immediately. I stay yeah. off until I uh, like I'm good. We'll see. Yeah. All right, but um, what what are your thoughts on like home theaters? Because I personally haven't really been to i don't know if i've been to any like home theaters but like those could be kind of cool like kind of a mix of home and there was this one time theater i camp. was in is either the biggest no uh <laughs> there's this one that was either in the biggest or like second or third biggest house in north carolina and it had this extensive home theater it was amazing and jake if i had that kind of money bro 100 percent yeah, one hundred percent. Not just for like watching movies, but for, like for gaming, for gaming and stuff and too. Stuff. Like one hundred. One day, Daniel. It was so dope. Buy the merch like, when it comes out, so Daniel <laughs> can have his dream. <laughs> but no, like it makes sense because you have your own dedicated space that has the best of the theater and also home it's, experience. Hamilton right? was onto something. It's the best of both worlds. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing it because I don't want to get copyright strict. I don't know if that would actually. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah i also want to shake things up what are your thoughts on watching movies at other people's homes depends on the people that's that's exactly my point because like yeah like if it's a you're really close friends like that, i think that's a fun time if you're going over like a movie night with some friends can be really fun but like if it's just random people it could be a little weird and, and also if they yeah. just like have bad home movie etiquette because i feel like if you're in a the theater people have like more strict etiquette but 
when you're just like at home, you'd be like, I don't know, let's play a game, put a movie on the background, like, and that's fine too. But if you're like, I don't know, it depends. I have a, I have a story actually about that. <sighs> it can be rough, Daniel, at times. Um, it was <laughs> um, right after episode three had come out for Star Wars, and we just got the oh. DVD, and I was so excited. And my birthday party was also happening. So I invited all my friends to come over to watch episode three with me. And being a bunch of kids, I can't blame them, but they had no attention span and did not want to sit down and watch episode three. So me, while I'm trying to watch Anakin and Obi-Wan fighting, everyone's playing Scrabble or something else. I don't even know what they were doing because I was so furious. <laughs> uh, you turned <sighs> to the dark side. I was so mad. You wanted to kill all the other younglings. I want to talk, uh, I just want to mention quickly projectors. I've never like really dived into that, but I feel like at a home at home like on a big wall or something even outside that could be cool mm-hmm. kind of like a mixture of home yeah. and drive-in similar thing yeah like a little backyard movie night on the lawn maybe all right my last thing i wanted to talk about was planes <sighs> watching movies no. on planes These planes and buses least some buses favorite i've never been on a bus high actually i have that's actually kind of, I actually I didn't even think about that, but buses I thought are okay because I was always with a bunch of friends and like we would always just make fun of it, just scream at the movie. Like I think we were watching um, Into the Woods because it was like a musical trip. That movie like never ends. We just kept making fun of it and then just like stop watching. So yeah, I guess I don't really watch movies <laughs> on buses, but planes. <laughs> My least favorite way to watch movies because I just don't enjoy. I feel like being on a plane, like that part. That really, tr- I don't know. Like I, the stress and like discomfort. I love being on planes. Really, I I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I just when I'm like planes. alone on a plane, I don't like it. I love the experience of planes. I hate people on planes. People yes, on planes are so I'm annoying. Saying. I I hate people so much in that. And scenario. like when you're trying to watch well, a movie and then people talk to you like that, it just it's the whole experience is bad. The one time I was flying home, just trying to chill, just trying to, I was trying to sleep. And there's, I'm stuck between these, if people want to hate me, I don't care. There are these two large women on my sides, and they're all, like, overhanging into, <laughs> like, I'm skinny, but, like, I didn't have any room. So then that, they're just, like, the one over here is like, oh, yeah, I have a leg problem. I need, to, she just, like, put her leg over on my side. And what? I'm like, you should be like, I also have heck? a leg problem and push your back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! I also have a leg problem. It was, it's called wanting space. <laughs> um, it was so bad, but like it's scenarios like that where you're just like, I agree, where it's it's so uncomfortable, and it's just if I was going to watch a movie, I just I feel still like wouldn't be possible. Planes, I'd be so distracted. Planes are good for like, oh, I remember this movie came out and it seemed interesting when I saw the trailer, but I would never actively seek it out. So maybe I'll watch it some confined in this box for four hours. Yeah, like those types of movies, like. Yeah, the last time I flew and was gonna watch a movie though, it, I was I think I started watching Blade Runner, like the original, and I and like that's like arguably a great movie, but like I just could yeah. not finish it because I was so tired and so just like I can't watch movies on planes. Like it, I don't know, maybe it's just a me thing. I also have had bad plane going experiences, dude. This last time, I literally wrote this down so I didn't forget because it was so crazy. But so I, I recently flew home to surprise my mom for her birthday, and then I flew back to L.A. There was this guy, man. And if he sees this, you were a very friendly guy. I'm sorry. It was, just, it was probably me. But, like, I don't know. He he was just, he said. Nonstop talking? Yes. And he, we met in the airport in Harrisburg. He said he was trying to get to Taiwan or some Asian country. I'm not sure. Because he was, like, born there. And he, I, maybe he was, he did not, he, like, looked like me, if that means anything. I was like, oh, interesting. And he told me he was like a famous musician over there and he couldn't wait to get back to his fans. And I was like, oh, okay. Also, he's like 60 or 70. I, I, it was such a weird experience, but like maybe 50. I don't know. Are you saying you look 50? No, 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 never mind. <laughs> um, so he, and, and like, he didn't have a passport. He was just kind of winging it between airports, he said. He told me this whole his whole life story, and he was, like, coughing a whole lot, and, like, a whole lot, and, like, didn't have his mask on, which was, like, kind of terrifying, and, like, he went to shake my hand after coughing into it, and I was like, no, I'm sorry, and this Karen mm. came up to me, and was like, good for you for not shaking his hand, and I was like, what? <laughs> it was just, like, this whole thing, and then, so, what happened was, I met him at the airport in Taiwan. Harrisburg. You're there now. No, in, yeah, in Harrisburg. <laughs> I then flew, yeah. we flew to, I think, Chicago. We had a connecting flight, and I didn't even know if where he was going next. Like, I didn't know he was going to L.A. So I thought that was the last I'd ever see him. And then we freaking end up on the same connecting flight. And we're seatmates on the second flight. So, so, like, he was like, oh, it was great. And, like, so we're chatting the whole time. He's coughing again the whole time. And it was just a bad experience. And, and there were no – I couldn't even watch a movie. Um, there was no movie in the on the plane. Um, so I just pretended to be on my phone and watch something on there. I felt bad. The guy nice. was – Kind of friendly, but like, also 
actually no he was kind of racist also and like um oh, no. was like he was homophobic and also was it misogynistic like, like men are his best that's misogynistic yeah isn't it? yeah 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 so i don't know why i said like a caveman but man is <laughs> best <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about that. Well, anyway. okay. The the, the counteract that I have a wholesome story. Actually, it's, it's a good story on the plane because there was this one time where I was flying down to Florida. Girl coming my way. She looked kind of cute. I'm like, I wonder where she's gonna be sitting. She's like, Oh, that's my seat next to you. I'm like, Okay. And like some kid like started like, Oh man, I wish I was dead. And then like she was like, Oh man, me too. He said it as like a joke what? or something like that. I don't <laughs> okay. know why. I don't know why the kid said it, but like you said this I think a wholesome like, story. No, no, like he was like no, was dead. <laughs> no, no, like the kid was like playing a game or something, and he said that oh, like okay. oh, I'm dead. So and, she like, me too. Uh, and then, like we, I laughed, and we just started talking. And then, uh, it's Daniel's story. So we're like of interacting with a woman <laughs> for the first time. So no, like we're talking a whole flight, but like like she had a boyfriend, so like it was kind of awkward. Uh, was kinda, was, we had, we had a lot of similar interests, so it was cool. But then like we kind of just said goodbye and. You know, yeah, that's always nice cousin. whenever you have like a nice, just yeah. like it doesn't it's lead nice to anything. And yeah, exactly. It's it just gives nice you hope you're like, man, I am likable, and there are people out there for me. Like, that is nice. I always like that. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's quickly review and then rank our favorites. So, best way to watch movies. Should we do worst to best? We talk about theaters, drive in, home, home and plane. Um, yeah, let's do be- worst to best. So, worst plane. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, worst is plane for me as well. What's I'd your say next? home. For me really like, it's not like bad it's just compared to the i think the other two for me are elevated above like i love doing that and home home is kind of my control because we were talking about control earlier if i was able to have your experience of the drive-in we just gotta get to the drive-in then, again man then i yeah honestly i put that at number two what would make your driving um, experience better being with the bros okay being with the bros <laughs> uh number two for me would be at home because again, like it's just comfortable. There is that comfort chill. built in level. That is yeah. good. I have to deal with annoying people who like shout and crap. Yeah. But then number one, obviously, obviously can't beat it. The movie theater, the theater. Movie th- okay. Don't say it like that. The theater. <laughs> just the way your mouth moved when <laughs> the you theater. said that. <laughs> the yeah. I think, <laughs> I think that's very similar to mine, except I would switch the two. So I think I've got plane, then home, then theater. Oh, wait, dude. No, what what are we doing? Dude, bathroom, number one. Oh my gosh, ba- yeah. <laughs> You're right. No, actually, mine's actually very different than yours that I'm thinking about it. Mine would be plain, then home, watching a movie at home, then mm-hmm. movie drive theater. In. No, then movie theater. Whoa, dri- driving's really? my number one, dude. I love going to the drive-in. But the thing is, I... I think I like it because it's so such a rarity. Like I don't think if I, this isn't my list of like if I had to choose one to only do ever again, I think I'd probably choose theater. movie theater. But like every yeah. once in a blue moon, I love going to the drive-in. But I like I wouldn't just choose like drive-in every time I do see a movie because that's just like a huge hassle. I think it, it also just depends. Like yeah, I prefer driving every once in a while because it's something special. But like the practicality of like watching at home is very nice. I don't know, movie theater is awesome. But yeah, yeah, no no plane. Anyways, that's the main segment. <laughs> you ready to move on to the next thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Ready to jump into totally tubular trivia tidbits. Yeah. All right. So this one, all right, this one I think is actually going to blow your mind. And I, I didn't know it until I found out this like super obscure YouTube video. So did you know four of Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man suits were stolen from the set of Spider-Man and were part of a criminal black market deal? What? Wait, in which film? The first one. <laughs> What the heck? Why? <laughs> so, yeah, in the first one. So when they were filming Spider-Man 2001, they made 60 Spider-Man suits, and each of them cost I, $50,000 to make, I knew that. Um, so in April of 2001, four of yeah. the suits actually went missing, and because they cost so much to make, Sony offered a $25,000 um, reward to anyone that had found the suits and they literally spent an entire year investigating it and they couldn't find anything they were like it was like a wild goose chase people were literally going on false leads and tips like taking them around the world until finally after a whole year after the movie had already come out a woman that was the ex-husband of a prior sony pictures security guard came forward and said that her husband had stolen the suits so the police went to the security guard's house in L.A. and couldn't find him. So they had literally had to track him across the country, and they found him in New York. And they found three of the four Spider-Man stolen suits. But in addition to that, they found a missing Batman Forever suit that was reported stolen in 1996 from Batman Forever that was fitted to a Val Kilmer life-size mannequin 
that was valued at $150,000. Apparently he worked at Warner Brothers before he worked at Sony and I, like they couldn't prove that he sold that one, but like, so the fourth suit, the missing fourth suit was sold in the black market to a collector in Japan. And so they had to go track him down and get it back. And so the, the security guard was eventually found and sentenced to nine months in prison and had to reimburse the, uh, the collector in Japan. But it was just a crazy that is... story. <laughs> what the heck? Why? <laughs> I mean, I get why because money, but like, why? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> the heck it's so uh, dumb appara- apparently he like imagine being the lead investigator on that like like you're batman trying to get spider-man suits back <laughs> <laughs> you have to travel to new york to then go to japan to, um, like what the heck that could be a movie in itself i, I know <laughs> i um yeah but credit to mr sunday movies uh for for that whole like spiel check out his original video he goes in a lot more depth and detail but like that i just thought that was a crazy story but i have two more and they are related yeah. to ice age it's because like blue skies oh. studios or animation just shut down i have a head cannon for ice age okay but you you go okay so did you know that scrat was originally not supposed to be an ice age really yeah so Why? later during the development process of ice age the filmmakers realized that the first scene where actual snow and ice in it came too like really far into the movie like 37 minutes after it started and they felt like a movie titled ice age needed to have needed to show the actual ice earlier so they created scrat only for the purpose of the opening scene um that would show the like impending ice coming in where he was like going after his acorn but test audiences absolutely loved scrat so they decided to add more scenes with him and they like kind of put him in after a dramatic scene to like liven up the Live, yeah, the pacing of the up. movie. And he became yeah. one of Ice Age's most famous characters. <laughs> okay, here's my headcanon quick about Scrat. He is shaggy level. And the reason oh, I say yeah, that yeah. is because the nut <laughs> broke the continents apart, so it has pl- the nut itself has planetary power. So then the fact that Scrat was able to eat it with such ease yeah. shows that he has so much raw strength Just that he has teeth. to be at... <laughs> his jaw. He, he's t- he has to be shaggy level. He has to be. That's my yeah. headcanon. Fight me on it. The... Um, I, <laughs> the idea for Scrat actually came from the writer's daughter of of uh, Ice Age, and it was supposed to be an animal that was a mixture of a squirrel and a rat. Scrat. Hmm, I like that. But yeah, so my last TTTT. Did you know Sid the Sloth from Ice Age was originally supposed to be a con man playboy type character? What made the complete flip? Because he's like the total opposite. Okay, so yeah, the writers for <laughs> Ice Age originally wanted Sid to be less clumsy and more smooth and crude. And there was actually an alternate scene of Sid in the hot tub with the lady sloths where he says, like, does all these like innuendos. It's like, let's jump into the gene pool and see what happens. <laughs> um, and one of the female sloths then kicks him in the groin. Apparently it can be, still be found on the DVD, but um, it was cut hmm. because they thought it wasn't suitable for children and it would have gotten the film a PG-13 rating, which is not what they wanted. Um, so his character was then changed to be like a talkative, goofy oh. sloth because yeah. the development team felt like the audience would have hated him. But there's actually also an alternate scene where he's like conning some like aardvark children. Um, <laughs> I don't know what he was doing, but yeah. Rest in peace, Blue Sky Animation. <laughs> Thank you for the years of good movies. Yeah. Many good movies. All right, but that was uh, pretty much everything I had for this episode. You ready for patron shoutouts? I think I'm good. Yeah, let's hit, hit me with them. Okay, we start music. Boosh, got pictures. Maury, Frank, Greg, Lisa, Evan, Tony. Thank you so much for listening. It's here. Thank you to the shout out. If you like to support us over on Patreon, the link is down in the description. You get the audio episode early. Uh, we actually put up some stuff about the merch. If you want to vote on that, have some input. Um, yeah, thank you so much, honestly, to our Patreon supporters and everyone that supports us. We really appreciate it. If you would like to head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review, or if you head on over to our YouTube and leave a comment, we will shout them out in this section now. Also, remember to leave a comment uh, just with your Instagram handle, and we will give you um that free what's it called mug free mug yeah all right so kylie (laughs) free what's it called (laughs) kylie actually commented on our last video my sister because we were talking about video games from our childhood and um she said jake may have beaten me a lot as kids but this past september i finally beat him in smash we played smash on the switch um and just just let's let's peel back the curtain a little bit we played probably 10 games that night i won nine of them and she beat me once. So <laughs> just check yourself, Kylie. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so ready for the introduction? Yep. Tell me when. When. We just talked about whatever we want to talk about. And now we're done. 
Blah. Thank you so, so much for listening. Seriously, really genuinely do appreciate it. Um, next week, we are doing a Marvel versus Star Wars debate, and where one of us yes. is going to take one side and, and just come up with a bunch of points of why it's better than the other and argue. Daniel, you said, did you want Star Wars? Yes, I want Star Wars. All right, so Daniel's doing Star Wars. I'm going to be doing Marvel. Hopefully, no, we're going to do a bunch of prep for this, okay? Both of us. Daniel, are you good to commit to doing prep for this? Yes, okay. I have my books. Wow, sweet. Oh, geez, books. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then after that, we are doing Multiverse of Madness, and we so right now have a special guest scheduled to join us again. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we will Ooh, see you for that. Yeah. Thank you. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye.